Hello, and welcome to 5th Grade Math. My name is Mr. Manella, and normally I teach 5th grade at Cochity. But while things are abnormal, I'll be helping you learn some important mathematical concepts through video. Helping me today is my assistant, Stuart Dent. Say hi to everyone, Stuart. Hi, everyone. And please, just call me Stu. You want me to just call you Stu? Stu Dent. Seriously? Yes, that's my name. What's weird about wanting to be called by your name? Uh, nothing, Stu Dent. <laughs> okay. By the end of this video, you're going to know how to tell the difference in place values of some very large numbers. What? Yes, Stuart. Go ahead. Mr. Renault, I have a pool in my backyard, so my place value is probably really high, right? <sighs> no, that's not how that works. First of all, that's a kiddie pool. Okay, I've been to your house, I've seen it. It's not worth a lot, okay? Um, and you should probably clean it at some point because <laughs> you know the water's not supposed to be green, right? What? Yeah, you, you should, your kiddie pool shouldn't look like the Rio Grande. Um, I understand that it's very authentically New Mexican, but at the same time, it's probably not terribly safe, okay? So, second of all, I do have some questions about how you're a homeowner, and I'm going to need to see some paperwork at some point, just to make sure that, you know, you're not going to get any trouble with the IRS. Okay, and third, no, that's not what we're talking about. Place value refers to how much a number is worth, or more specifically, a digit inside of a number. Okay, but you do need to understand place value to properly understand whether or not your house is worth a lot of money. So even though we're not talking about how much your house is worth specifically, you will need to learn this in order to understand it. Yes, Stuart. Um, Mr. Manella, yes. what do you mean what it's worth? Isn't uh, seven just a seven? Is a seven just worth a seven? First of all, the numbers zero through nine are called digits. Every number you could ever write will be made up of those 10 digits. Okay, just like any word you could possibly read or write is made up from all the letters in the alphabet. Okay. Now, you mentioned a seven a minute ago. Let's use that, okay? Let's look at the number 77. Both digits are seven, but are those two sevens worth the same amount? They are not because each one is in a different place, okay? This seven right here, is only worth seven, like seven dollars, because it's in the ones place. But this seven is actually worth 70. That's what its value is, because it's in the tens place, like $70. Value, place, place value. Get it? Mm, I think I get it much better, Mr. Manella. If you put seven crisp one dollar bills in this hand and topped it with seven crisp ten dollar bills in the other. Okay, sure. Oh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There you go. And hold that steady. One, two, oh, three, four, five, it. six, seven. That's because you need to hit the gym, man. Look how skinny your arms are. Here. Oh, I'll hold it here. Okay, you're putting it in your mouth. Do you realize how dirty money is? Ah, uh, now I do. Okay. I hope you learned something from this. This is not real money, Mr. Manel. You never specified that it needed to be real money. It was implied. <laughs> Well, I did not infer that from our conversation. So, you know, you're just going to have to deal with it. I won't forget this. Uh-huh. Okay, let's move on. Okay. But don't worry. You're all fifth graders, and you are not going to spend all this time focusing on tens and ones, okay? We're going to start talking about much larger numbers like millions and billions, okay? <laughs> Mr. Manella, have you discovered how many Benjamins make a billion? Uh, you're getting ahead of me. Okay, we'll get to that, we'll cover it at the end. But for now, we're gonna talk about the similarities between millions and billions, okay? Because they're related and we need to talk about how, okay? They look kind of similar. They're spelled almost exactly the same. They sound almost exactly the same. But are they? No way. Let's take a look. As you can see, one billion is bigger than one million. How much bigger? Well, let's find out. Okay. Notice that one million has six zeros, while one billion has nine zeros, which is three more zeros than one million. So what does that mean? I like to call it mo place, mo value. Slow clap. Thank Slow you. Clap. Thank you. I try. Okay. Now let's take a look with the number seven. Okay. If I take that seven, which is now in the ones place, 
and I slide it over to the tens place, and I add a zero to fill that ones place, what number did I multiply by to get there? Oh, that's easy. Seven times ten is seventy. Correct, you are. Now, let's say I slid it over to the hundreds place, and I added another extra zero, and now I have seven hundred. Now, what number did I multiply by to get there? One hundred? Correct again. Times ten, one extra zero. Times one hundred, two extra zeros. So what does three extra zeros mean? Times one thousand. Excellent. You're very, very right. And did you notice anything new about this number? Well, you added a comma, but I have no idea why. Well, each big number has its own name. And we use a comma to tell that name. The first comma is called the thousands comma. And it helps you name the number. For example, one thousand. Ten thousand. One hundred thousand. But every time we get to a new thousand, we have to level up to the next comma. What do you think the next comma is called? Zillions! Now, now, we've been through this. Zillion is not a real number. I know. I know. <sighs> Millions. Thank you. That is the correct answer. So when we level up from 100 thousands to 1,000 thousands, instead of calling it 1,000 thousands, we give it a new comma and call it 1 million. Just like with the thousands, you have 1 million, 10 million, and 100 million. The commas help you name the number. And now it's time to level up our comma again. Nick, you know what the next one is? Well, you were talking about billions earlier. So I'm gonna go with that. Excellent deduction. It is time for the billions comma. And so what does that mean for thousands and millions and billions? And that means there are a thousand millions in every billion. And one million is already a big number. And a billion is a thousand millions. That's a lot, dude. I know. Totally. Let's learn some more about it. Yeah. So when we level up from 100 millions to 1,000 millions, instead of calling it 1,000 millions, we level up to a new comma, the billions comma. It's one billion. Now that we know that there are a thousand millions in a billion, let's have some fun playing with that relationship. Yes, we're going to be talking more about money. Lots and lots of money. I'm ready. You're ready. Those are my sunglasses. That's my watch. Where did you get those things? I told you I was ready. This isn't, this isn't over. We need to have a conversation about boundaries. We'll be right back. So, now that we're back and we've talked about what we do with other people's things and what we don't do without asking... I'm sorry. I accept your apology. I can't really stay mad at you. Okay. Now, we already established that a million dollars is a lot of money, but we aren't stopping there. We're going to be talking about billions of dollars. Now, how many of you have ever been to a Walmart? You been to a Walmart? Oh, yeah. A oh. lot. I'll bet you have. I mean, Walmarts are everywhere, and they sell pretty much everything. Did you know that Walmart started as just one store in a state called Arkansas? It's over there somewhere on the other side of Texas. A man named Sam Walton started the first Walmart in 1962, and now there are over 11,000 stores. And as you can imagine, with 11,000 stores, it's going to make you one of the biggest companies in the world. And with big companies, you get big money. Not just millions. Billions. How many billions? Well, let's do the math. Sam Walton passed away in 1992, and he had four children. Three of them are still alive, and they own the Walmart company together. Each of them has about $55 billion. Yes, billion with a B. If we combine their money, that gives us about $160 billion. That number looks like this. And if you're thinking that 55 times 3 is 165, you're right. But for now, we're just going to estimate. That's a very big number. So what we're going to do now is think of that number in terms of millions and time. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, let's say you made a million dollars every day. Pretty sweet, right? I'd be rich beyond my wildest dreams. Right, well now we're gonna see how long it would take you if you made a million dollars every day to get to 160 billion dollars. Mm. How long do you think that would be? 
couple of weeks, maybe. Yeah, well, let's find out, okay? So let's say you made a million dollars every day for an entire year. Not bad, right? It's more than I make. It's more than a lot of people make. Mm -hmm. And so there are 365 days in a year. So if you made a million dollars every day for 365 days, you would have $365 million. Not bad, right? Okay, so is that more than one billion? Remember, one billion is 1,000 millions. Is 365 million more than 1,000 millions? No, it isn't. 1,000 millions or one billion is more than 365 million. In fact, 365 million isn't even half of one billion and we need to get to 160 billion. Now, to make the math friendlier, we're going to round up to the nearest 100 million, which gives us, right, 400 million, okay? So that's a $35 million bonus just for being friendly to math. Remember that the next time you're about to yell at a fraction. Okay, so now we have $400 million in one year. That number looks like this, 400 million. Well, how much would we have in 10 years? Since we're multiplying one year by 10, we can take the shortcut and add a zero. Now we have this number, which is... Four billion. I know, because we leveled up to the billions, comma. Right. So now let's multiply those 10 years of money making by 10 again, which means we have gone 100 years into the future. Add one more zero. Now we have $40 billion. It has taken us 100 years, and we still need to get to $160 billion. Well, if we multiply 40 billion by 4, which means we repeated that 100 year saga of money making four more times, that gives us 160 billion. So, how long did it take us? Well, we multiplied 10 years times 10 years times 4 years, which is 400 years. What? Yep, it took us 400 years at a million dollars every day to get to $160 billion, the amount the Walmart family has today. And remember, that was with us giving ourselves a $35 million a year bonus, just to make the math friendlier. Again, this is called estimating. The actual number is closer to 452 years. But to get there, we had to use long division, and we're gonna learn about that later in the year. So, to recap, one billion is really big. Uh -huh. It's a thousand millions, and it would take you 400 years to get to 160 billion, which is the amount the Walmart family has today. Whoa, it's a lot. So, Stu, what do you think of that? I think the Walton family makes way more than a million bucks a day. <laughs> He's not wrong. Yes, Mr. Manella? yes, what, what is it? What is it, Stu? Mr. Manella? Yes, go ahead. Mr. Manella? How many Benjamins would it take to make one billion dollars? I assume that by Benjamins you mean hundred dollar bills because they have Benjamin Franklin on them? Yes. Yes. Here, just, just, just tip it. Thank you. Uh, you need ten million. Ten million hundred dollar bills. Okay, and that would weigh over 20,000 pounds, which is like two fully grown elephants. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. What? That concludes today's video lesson. So just a quick recap. Remember, each comma in a number means that we're leveling up to a new place value name. The first comma is thousands, the next comma is millions, and the third comma is billions. Each new comma means 1,000 of the number or comma that came before it. 1,000 thousands is 1 million, and 1,000 millions is... 1 billion. Yes. Dude, we got it. We got, we got it. it. Okay. We got it. See you next time.